Hello and welcome to 20 Lore Pro. We're here live at Charlie's Collectible Show in Stone Mountain, Georgia for their Lorcana 2K. We're in round five of seven, watching Austin piling in an Emerald Steel List versus George piloting a Ruby Amethyst. Thank you all for joining us here today. I'm one of your announcers, Sir Ashtown, and join with me is Hal. Hal, how's it going? Going good. Good day so far. We're uh, already at round five of seven of the Charlie's Collectible Show 2K. And we've got, yeah, like you said, Austin versus George, both uh, undefeated 4-0. I imagine uh, the winner of this match will most likely be able to secure their spot into that top eight. So we've got, uh, yeah, the Emerald Steel versus the Ruby Amethyst. And the Emerald Steels started off strong with the turn one Diablo. Turn two, Bucky. George probably with a sigh of relief that uh, Austin did not have the shift Diablo line. Uh, but still got some things to, to work out here as uh, Bucky is definitely the most powerful card in this matchup versus Ruby Amethyst. Now, am I mistaken? Did we get to see Austin play earlier in today's uh, 2K? Uh, yeah, we saw him uh, take down uh, Tupaloop's uh, Amber Emerald uh, Bucky List. Yeah, so great to see him here again later on in the tournament now at 4 and 0. Right, so it looks like George just went ahead with a friend to the other side. And uh, the key in this matchup, we've seen this matchup a couple times throughout the weekend. Uh, Probably more favored on the Emerald Steel side, especially when that, they have that turn two Bucky draw, but Ruby Amethyst does have a shot if they can keep uh, plenty of cards in their hand, they can keep inking, they can get up to six and seven for that Madame Medusa and be prepared, but Austin's got the nightmare draw for George. He has got a second Bucky, so once he starts deploying these Floodborns, he's gonna have to start discarding two cards a turn. Wow, really exciting here. Like you were saying, Hal, pointing out the two Buckies. Oh my goodness, this is uh, kind of where you want to be against a Ruby Amethyst player. Uh, this is a, a lot to handle, and we'll see how George really tries to come back from having two Buckies on the board and seeing any Floodborns that may come out. So Austin decides to ink a Sudden Chills, thinking I probably won't need this just single discard song action when I've got double Bucky in play, and then goes ahead and plays a one-drop Robin Hood that may be a little telling of what's coming from Austin next turn. So we'll see what George can do here. If he's got something like a Brawl, uh, he's was probably saving it for something like a Diablo, but it may be worth just hitting that one-drop Robin Hood to prevent the shifts. It's more than likely Austin's plan since he committed that to the board there on turn three. But he is gonna go ahead and ink one of those Maleficent Sorceresses, pretty much every Ruby Amethyst player we've seen this weekend with, and he's got another one to play. So plays the Magic Broom, plays the Maleficent Sorceress, draws a card, and then uses the Broom ability to banish itself and draw an additional card as well. That is one way to combat these discard decks like this, is to make sure that you are drawing as much as you possibly can, continuing to get your ink well full while you can, and eventually when you get to turn six or seven, you hit, you're left with no cards in hand, you're able to play anything that you top deck, and if it's draws, hopefully you can double play cards. Yeah, but just like we were thinking, he also does have that shift, Robin Hood Champion of Sherwood, that's gonna trigger both of those Bucky discard effects. So George looking at discarding a Lady Tremaine, just a co six cost on Inkable and not gonna be a great effect here. And as well as that Bee King Undisputed, because Austin's got a few too many characters that he, he could just, you know, banish his own one drop Diablo and just not really bad an eye at that. Uh, also takes down that Maleficent uh, Sorceress with that Let the Storm Rage on. Uh, but yeah, I mean, George is only, you know, hope here is to get to that seven ink and hopefully have it be prepared but that's if for one he has enough cards to get to seven ink and two austin doesn't have that two drop ursula deceiver to rip it out of his hand george here is on four ink we see that castle there in hand Maybe something to put into the ink well. We'll see what he draws for turn. Looks like a Merlin Rabbit. We'll see what these uh, what George can do for turn. A Rabbit is a great another draw engine for this deck, especially if you're able to recur it. Goes ahead and decides to play it. And you've noticed pretty much every play George has made up to this point, anything that he has committed to the board replaced itself and drew an extra card. And that is that is pretty much Ruby Amethyst's only hope to getting through, especially a double Bucky draw from Austin. 
Austin here just looking for more Bloodborns and finds one in the case of Aladdin is able to cause George to, to discard two more. Uh, it's two Queen's Castles, which is normally uh, one of the cards that helps the Ruby Amethyst player run away with the game. And yeah, and then Austin has a Long Cane Zeus to take out the rabbit as well. And he's just got a full board here of characters. It's a really strong showing right now of Emerald Steel. Just one of the reasons and the lines in which it can really overpower the game, especially against Ruby Amethyst. And we see another rabbit and George is climbing up the ladder. He's getting that ink, but I'm looking at his hand and I don't think he has a be prepared as of yet. If he does have a snake, he may want to just go ahead and return that rabbit and get an extra card. Keep as many cards in hand as possible. Keep making those ink drops. And do everything you can to find that be prepared. And that's exactly what he decides to do. Bouncing that rabbit back to hand, able to draw. Has multiple cards to discard if he needs to to the Bucky. And it looks like he's a friend on the other side. He's got a friend on the other side and a B King Undisputed, both that could be susceptible to that to an Ursula, Ursula Deceiver. But I don't think Austin's going to do anything with his ink except keep playing Floodborns. And that's what we see here. He's going to. Oh, he only has four. Oh, God, I think it was a little bit of a misplay. He he mm. inked his four drop Jafar Dreadnought thinking he had five as he's trying to play another champion of Sherwood. And uh, that may cost him because that wow. not making George draw two ex or discard two extra cards could be uh, what decides the game. Uh, but now George, you see playing that friends of the other side and uh, playing a rabbit again and just has a full grip of cards. So he does find a fifth ink and now he'll deploy that champion to Sherwood. So George will end up still having to discard two. And I don't think he's found to be prepared yet. So he's gonna have to keep digging. And really, George has done everything possibly, like you're saying, how a textbook to try to keep drawing, putting cards into your hand, make sure you have ink in your ink well. That way, if he does top deck that, be prepared. He's able to get there. Yes, yeah, so we see a Queen's Castle. We see a Sisu. Uh, we see the Bee King Undisputed. We see a Fox. So he's got another effect to return that rabbit once again. And Austin is out of cards with no draw engine. He is up to seven lore. So George is gonna take out the, the one drop Diablo with the rabbit. And then I assume we're gonna see the fox come down. That'll cost him three. Rabbit's gonna go back, draw another card. And it's another rabbit. Uh, fox could take out the Aladdin if he wants. But we're gonna take a look at one more card first. And there's the be prepared. So if George's hand can go unscathed from uh, Ursula Deceiver, he'll be able to wipe the board and be prepared next turn. So let's see what Austin draws. And it's just a removal. It's the uh, Strength of the Raging Fire, take out the rabbit, he draws a card, but George is ready. You can see the excitement in his hands. He's, <laughs> he's ready to be prepared you next know. turn. Neither of those champions of Sherwood are gonna get to draw an extra card. They only get to do that if they're banished in a challenge. Be prepared, just gonna cleanly wipe up the board, leave Austin with no cards in play, no cards in hand, and George is still gonna have a handful of cards to play with. I just love be prepared because it really asks your opponent, are you prepared for this board wipe? And right now, Austin, no cards in hand. See, Austin did everything he could. He had the he double did. Bucky. Uh, he just really needed the, the now the Ursula would have to have been timed perfectly. And if you notice, Austin actually didn't be prepared until turn eight. So if he would have had the Ursula on right before George's turn seven, he would have missed it. So it, it would have been nearly impossible. Austin would have had to top deck it right then and there. Otherwise, I feel like he would have played it right before the turn seven. Wow, and here's a great follow up play with the Queen's Castle and the Rabbit. Uh, just like you're saying, how great execution by George, this Ruby Amethyst player, just really showing, just continue to fight, continue to keep going. Don't just give up, even though your opponent really has some great lines. You just gotta keep playing to your outs and eventually you may find a way, which George has. We'll see what Austin can do to try to get back into this match, but George has done a great job of keeping himself in. Yeah, so Austin has to use that Jafar, puts three damage on the Queen's Castle, but that's not going to be good enough. The Rabbit's there, so we're going to draw an extra card. We're going to get two lore for free. Uh, and then the Rabbit's going to sing a B-King Undisputed, so Austin's going to have to decide between that Aladdin and that Jafar. Yep, and then Madame Medusa's going to clean up the other one, so there's really no decision even have to be made. Both characters are gone. Uh, George now with two characters in that castle. Considering playing a Fox, returning the Rabbit... 
Draws another card there. Let's go ahead and ink a brawl. So yeah, I'm gonna keep the two characters there. Austin's in top deck mode. Gets a champion of Sherwood, not the worst. He is already at 11. Jordan only at four, but that castle's gonna catch him up so quickly. And now we're drawing three cards a turn. Uh, it's, you know, all but sure gonna go George's way this game. Uh, and I, there's no way he doesn't have something to do to this Robin Hood. And he returns him out of Medusa and has the ink to replay it to immediately take it out that Robin Hood. Once you're at this point in the game and not at a high enough lore to hope to, to steal it away, it's all going to be over. George should be taking game one shortly. Yep. And Austin's seen enough. going to scoop it up and we'll shuffle up for game two. Wow, what a great game one from just these two players. We really got to see Emerald Steel just go off with the Bucky line and the resilience and comeback from this Ruby Amethyst deck by George. Congratulations to both of them, that's amazing. While these two are shuffling up and getting ready for their next match, let's head on over to our feature match two. We have Zan again, piloting his Emerald Steel deck versus Joshua, another Emerald Steel deck. This is his second uh, mirror match of the day. Looks like they're heading into their second game here in a best of three round five. Yeah, Zan uh, definitely getting his uh, his share of the mirror matches this weekend. Um, he's, he's definitely had to play plenty of Emerald Steel mirrors. So when he, we've seen him on camera, he's been well versed in the matchup. Uh, but his opponent Joshua starting off with a deceiver of all in the inkwell, followed by Diablo, and taking a look at what Zan is up to. So Zan going to ink a sudden chill, play the Robin Hood, and pass. We've seen some just great games today in this 2K. Uh, as Forbidden Mountain in the chat was pointing out, we saw in round five, our last match, Ruby Amethyst versus Emerald Steel, I think a master class in how to pilot that in that situation when you see two Bucky staring down. And from Zan earlier today, we've seen him in this mirror choosing some lines that really made him come out above, even though it cost him some of the Bucky's to ink. So we've, we've seen some really wonderful technical games today that I think are going to be matches for us to have to review in the future on how to play these decks. Yeah, absolutely. So Joshua did have uh, the Diablo come into play, uh, but Zan's going to take a look at his hand, see if there's any songs available to rip, and it's not. It's another Diablo. It's a champion of Sherwood, and Josh will have the option to shift that Robin Hood. So Zan probably not wanting to leave any of his characters vulnerable this turn and just going to pass it back. We see Josh just deploy a, a second Diablo into play. Uh, really strong for that matchup. And here we are in game two of our first feature match, Austin versus George. Looks like Austin's going to take a peek with Diablo into George's hand, try to figure out what to do next. Or I guess I should say that's his turn one leadoff. Uh, pretty strong, especially if you're able to play a Bucky and shift into that Diablo. Yeah, and we see George there revealed, I believe, to be prepared. So it's definitely something Austin's going to have to be cognizant of and see if he can uh, find maybe two Ursulas to do it or if he can just whittle his hand down to where he's forced to discard them anyway. And the turn two Bucky will definitely help with that game plan. And he immediately shifts the Diablo. So we're going to start the discarding now. So George decides to ditch that Maui. And now this Chernobog's followers seems a little worse. Uh, you're not really going to want to, I mean, you could, you could choose to quest with it and, and draw a card from the ability, but then Austin could also have the option to draw an extra card with his Diablo. It's just not really what you want to be doing, but he may not have a choice. So he's just going to quest for one. He's definitely fine if the Diablo wants to run into it and trade with it, but actually he's going to he's gonna protect it. He's going to bounce it back with the snake, and I like that because then the, the next turn the followers will probably just be ink, and at least you upgrade it to a 3-3. Three, three. 
And we just talk about, you know, great lines that we've seen Austin do, you know, game one. He had the two buckies. And again, another powerful line, uh, having this shift Diablo on turn two, a second bucky here again in game two. We'll see if he's able to utilize it in this matchup uh, for this game two here in a way to get George out. It's pretty crazy to see two games in a row the Emerald Steel player have double Bucky, but to note, he lost last game. So, like, it just wasn't enough. So George just had way too much card draw, but George's hand looks a little clunkier this go around. So, you see him just have to ink and pass. No friends of the other side or the like. Uh, Austin's going to ink a uh, Ursula, play another Diablo, and it's time to discard two more cards. It looks like George has got a grip full of non inkables. Looks like he's trying to hold on to those bee prepares, but he ditches a rabbit and a Madame Medusa. Diablo's gonna go sideways again. Uh, George uh, had a rabbit left, and he's gonna draw a card with rabbit, and I don't think Austin drew an extra card off of his Diablo. So players are playing a little quick. Uh, sometimes you gotta slow down and make sure you're not missing any of your triggers, but it may not matter. Now we see George starting to have to pitch those bee prepares. I think he's still got one left, but now, Austin's got double Diablos that are active. They're turning sideways, they're questing, and George has had enough. We're gonna move on to game three. Yeah, it, it looked like right there, like you're saying, Hal, that they were playing very fast. Austin having those double Diablos, sometimes you miss a trigger on the draws, but he was so far ahead already. Here we are back in our second feature match with Zan versus Joshua. Let's see how their second game of their best of three here in round five is working out for him. We see that Zan has a Diablo and a Ursula there on a cove with no board on Joshua's side. Yeah, it looks like uh, Zan's got a pretty good setup here. Now, both of Zan's characters do already have two damage apiece on them. Uh, so let's see what we've got here. We've got a, a champion of Sherwood. Uh, and if, he, if Joshua could get rid of that hidden cove, that Diablo would actually just be banished immediately. So we'll see... What's going on here? I see a couple Diablos in Joshua's discard and a couple of uh, those Streams of the Raging Fires. It looks like this has already been been a pretty pretty wild slugfest here. Both players at a very low lore total. Zan at two with Joshua at five. Zan finding a Deceiver of All to add to the board and most likely going to turn this Diablo sideways uh, if he has anything to sing or maybe just quest for one. And looks like he's going to decide to quest with the Ursula as well. It's getting buffed by the Cove. Uh, I think the, the line of thought here is in would, is, is wants Josh to have to choose. Because if you don't quest with the Ursula, Josh just says, okay, I'm going to go under the Cove and I'm going to put it on a turn two clock. But now that he's turned the Ursula sideways, I think the correct play is still going into the Cove. But now Zan's getting free lore for a couple turns out of that Ursula. Also, too, this Ursula Deceiver of all you present a character that's easily able to be challenged and do some damage and maybe you have a removal that's then able to do extra damage to the sure to get rid of it and then whatever else joshua may play yeah and you see here uh josh ends up just still fully committing to the cove uh and yeah, so he takes out the cove with a combination of Champion of Sherwood with that along came Zeus. And since Diablo already has two damage counters on it, it falls back down to two willpower and it is banished. So that really helps cleans up some of the threats, but he's still going to have have to worry about this Ursula Deceiver of all. He's going to fire off a sudden chill, make Zan pick one card. Hidden Cove going to go to the discard. And is Zan going to have a double song to sing with that Ursula? It's always interesting to see just the anticipation of waiting, uh, trying to find out if he does have a song. We know that uh, Zane's just able to make these plays in these tight spots like this. So he had a strength of the raging fire, decides to ink it and goes completely empty in the hand, but that's so he can get that tragic beast into play. And even if he would have double sung that with the Ursula, only would have dealt four damage to the champion of Sherwood. So I like this line. He's getting this beast into play. He's got another threat for Josh, but Josh has got another champion of Sherwood. This is going to be an interesting board state here. Uh, the Ursula could still end up finding a song to double sing, but the beast is probably going to sit back and draw double cards. And uh, yeah, but then those Robin Hoods would just start questing away. So we are back on to our main coverage match. Uh, we are on to game three, uh, Austin versus George. Uh, George piloting the Ruby Amethyst and Austin on the Emerald Steel Bucky. Austin starting us off like he has in the last 
two games with that turn one Diablo, able to look at George's hand, try to figure out how he wants to line up his plays. See if he's got the turn two Bucky, or if two games in a row having double Bucky may have ran him out of Bucky luck. Nope, not yet. Still got wow. the coral. <laughs> Wow, with the shift Diablo as well. Oh Austin hands this whole match has just been crazy. It's, it's actually quite a feat that George was able to defeat double Bucky draw game one, but here's Austin again. He already knows George's full hand, and he's shifting that Diablo immediately on turn two. I mean, sometimes we talk about in these tournaments that you just run hot. You get your draws exactly the way you drew it up in the drawing board back at home, and uh, it looks like Austin's doing that exactly right here. So George decides to pitch one of the friends of the other side, and that's good news for Austin. It's not something he'd want to play right now anyway until he can clear that bird off the field. Um, Austin, no other song to sing, just going to quest for one, but turning that Bucky ability on. So George is kind of in a pickle here. He's got another friends of the other side, and he just has to play it. And that is devastating. Austin is going to get to draw two additional cards. George has nothing in play and still staring down that Bucky. This would be interesting to see if Austin for another game has another Bucky, but he does have a second Diablo. Oof. Yeah, so George is going to get rid of that Flynn. And, uh, I mean, he's got a rabbit. He's got Maleficent Sorceress, just all these cards that can trip and draw additional cards that are just not great right now because it just refills Austin's hand as well, and he, he just doesn't really have a choice. He's going to have to do it. Austin just getting to refill, full grip, almost and surely going to have Floodborns every turn here on out. Just all those additional draws really just makes the odds of Austin getting into viable Floodborns uh, that much more. I mean, we're seeing here possibly a setup to make sure that he's clear, but could be a third shift, yeah. Well, let's look, take a good peek at his hand. Lots of songs. Strength of the Raging Fire, Along Came Zeus. He actually doesn't have another Floodborne to play. He will on turn five. We see him ink a giant Tinkerbell. Uh, he's got a Hidden Cove. That could be something in consideration. Uh, he could play play one of these cards maybe to, to get rid of this rabbit. Well, no, he's already used one ink, so he's not going to be able to play one of the Zeus's. He may end up just... I mean, I could see him doing the Cove. I could see him. He could sing Strength of Raging Fire on the Rabbit. Uh, just the strength even right now on this board state. Four damage to a character. Possibly five if you have another one. Really a great card. And what a great character to sing it with. Uh, Ursula Deceiver of All. Yep, so it looks like he's just going to go questing with the... Uh, both of the the birds there, and oh, man, George, you I, I you know he's got to be frustrated here. He just says, "Screw it, I don't have a choice." Seeing the uh, friends of the other side, um, Austin's going to get to draw an additional four cards. Uh, he's going to use Snake to take back the rabbit, and then Rabbit's going to let him draw an additional two cards. He's going to end up drawing like six extra cards this turn. So he's trying to decide if he needs to draw again. Decides to. Yeah, I mean, there's absolutely no reason not to. But yeah, I mean, George Austin got to draw an extra two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten cards that turn. Okay. So Austin just says, all right, well, it's if you liked double Bucky game one and double Bucky <laughs> game two, how about triple Bucky for game three? This has really been the tournament here at Charles Collectible Show of just triples and quads of goats, castles, and now Bucky's. But I mean, something to note here George is on five ink. <laughs> Next turn, he can go to six. Uh, now, I, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Austin has a. Uh, a two drop Ursula to make sure that that turn seven be prepared doesn't happen. Uh, but 
Uh, we'll see. Yeah, so the Diablos are going to go go questing. Uh, Ursula double saying Shrink of the Rage and Fire to take out George's Maleficent and Madame Mim Snake. Uh, hopefully George doesn't have to draw any more extra cards to get this hand set up because, I mean, Austin's going to have his entire deck. Uh, so, so there he draws to be prepared. He's going to play Rabbit. Uh, yeah, to just... draw some additional cards. Comes a point when Thanks again. you've got so much in hand, you might as well just keep drawing. I, I, it doesn't uh, doesn't change how much they have. He is, he is threatening to be prepared next turn if Austin's not able to make him dump his entire hand. But there is the two drop, Ursula. Shows the hand. There is only one be prepared. And we we are. I'm sure we're going to see a shift Robin Hood champion. Uh, yeah, and so now triple Bucky. George has to discard three cards for every Floodborne that gets played. So George, I think, has to top deck another be prepared. Right now he's going to discard chill. two more to the double saying sudden chill. Uh, but he, oh, and now it's, now he doesn't have seven ink to top deck be prepared because he had to discard too many cards. Uh, just this triple Bucky, really strong. Also, with our other match here, the feature match too, uh, Zan was able to get the win out on the other feature match against his opponent. So that the last card in George's hand is that is the rabbit, and it's not inkable, so he can't get to seven. Out of those five cards he discarded this turn, I'm wondering if one of those was inkable, and maybe that should have been the last card he held on to, just in case you got to play to your outs. If this card he draw, if George draws his be prepared, he would have been able to cast. It's gonna be unlikely. He's already down a couple, and it's not. It wasn't. So he's gonna draw one more card with the rabbit, and that's not it. So Austin is going to take out George uh, in two games of three of Emerald Steel versus Ruby Amethyst. We want to thank you all so much for joining us here today at 20 Lore Pro as we're streaming Charlie Collectibles shows Lorcana 2K. We streamed their 10K earlier in the day. If you missed any of these rounds for this 2K tournament or the 10K, you can head on over earlier in the week to 20 Lore Pro's YouTube. We're going to take a quick break here and we will bring you round six here in just a little bit. Hello and welcome to 20 Lore Pro. We're here at Charlie's Collectible Show, their Lorcana 2K. We didn't get a chance to interview him during the end of round five, but we get, we're getting a chance here now to catch up with Austin, who piloted, piloted the Emerald Steel list. Now, you've drawn into top eight. You were able to win your round five. How's it feel to be here today? Um, very nervous, very nervous. Um, Green Steel, definitely best at yeah, tell me about some of your favorite lines or some of your favorite plays that you've been able to do with your em Emerald Steel list. Unfortunately, we didn't get to Bucky as much as we wanted to for the, the nice combo to go off. Um, fortunately enough, like the Diablo one drop, without knowing all this uh, information, it helped out a lot. And so even when we didn't see the combo, we still got there. That's amazing. And we were watching you in round five and you were just playing amazing during that whole entire time. Um, is this your LGS? And is there anyone that you'd like to give a shout out to? Um, this isn't my LGS. My LGS is uh, in Hinesville, Georgia, Legendary Phoenix Games. Um, and a shout out to my crew that came out here today, and they're also doing really well. Um, there's two of them right now. I think they're guaranteed top eight, and one of them that's trying for X2. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. So you have a really strong play group that you're able to play with and test. N knowing your deck, what are you the most worried about facing here going into top eight? Uh, unfortunately, the green stamp matchup as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we, that's pretty good when you can say that your your most worst matchup is uh, Emerald Steel, your own deck that you're already playing. It just means you have a great play against every other deck in the format. Uh, anything you want to say to the audience before we head out for today? No, I just appreciate the game. Appreciate Lorcana. That's it. Well, awesome. Thank you so much for interviewing with us. We really appreciate it. And you, the viewers at home for watching, we'll catch you in top in round seven, and we'll see y'all here in just a little bit. Hello and welcome to 20 Lore Pro. We're here today at Charlie's Collectible Show for their Lorcana 2K. We got finished up with their 10K, and I'm here with our round five winner, Zan. Yeah. How are you doing today? Doing great. I'm locked for top eight, so I'm going to be able to draw the last two rounds, and let's, let's see what happens in top eight. 
Gosh, we we watched you, I think, in round four, but you have just been playing your deck, I, I mean textbook. I would say a master class <laughs> on how to pilot this deck. What's been some of your favorite lines from your list? I mean, the Hidden Cove lines are truly hidden. Um, they're they're kind of like the biggest anomaly in the mirror match because people fail to do the math for it. But um, so that's been kind of the the textbook way to beat the mirror match is hitting hidden cove, the hidden tech. Uh, the, uh, it's amazing. We were looking at the card yesterday, and you're right. In the mirror, you just see it like people aren't expecting that math. They're not expecting what to come up against, and even not the mirror, just any other match. The, just the extra damage is great. Yeah, extra damage is great. Also, it like lines up really well against the big Sisu, right? Putting your guys at three power. That's uh, Sisu can't can't take down your your threats that way. So that's amazing. Well, we had a lot of people in the Twitch chat kind of asking what happened yesterday. I think you had to leave a little early, is that right? From the 10K tournament. Yeah. So basically, I I like uh, my family had plans that I couldn't miss. It involved a wedding situation. Basically, I had sculpted just enough time to play seven rounds, and uh, they they ended up making it eight rounds. And so when I I was five one, gonna be playing my win in and against Kendall, I um I decided to just give him the win, scoop my friend into top eight, and then I ended up not dropping just so I could still secure top thirty two, and I ended up getting thirtieth place. So I basically, yeah, I basically didn't get a chance to play for top eight, but uh, you know, family comes first. No, and I agree. This is a family oriented game. This is a hobby, but being able to be with a family is great. Um, I think, you know, maybe I'm being a little favoritism here, but I think if you would have stayed, you probably would have made it into the finals because um, yeah. you were playing so well yesterday when we were watching you, even on the feature match then. No, I, I really appreciate that. I mean, who knows what, what would have happened, but um, I, I feel like I made the right choice um, and it's paying off today. Well, that's great. And I, we can see it too. You're going to get here into the finals of today's. You're going to be able to cut and draw in. And so we're excited to see you. Hopefully we can have you for another feature match and see you then. Any final words for our audience there at home? Um, let's, uh, let's all work really hard together to uh, get Bucky and Diablo banned. <laughs> Any uh, shout outs to anyone you want to just give a shout out to? Um, I can't remember. Shout out to the kid who... Um, who ended up winning the the 10k? What was his yeah, name? Yeah, Luca. Luca. Yeah. I watched him play. He played phenomenally. Um, I love to see the next generation, you know, playing ex exceptional. So um, I've heard that he he worked with Kendall um, online in the Discord uh, in 20 Lore Pro, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's just awesome to see the next generation of card players. I think so many in the community are echoing what you're saying, that it was really great to see someone so young, like Luca, get to the top, play well, play one of the best, probably Ruby Amethyst players in the game, and, yes. and just compete so well. So yes. thank you so much, Zan. Good luck in the next rest of the rounds. Really appreciate it. And thank you all for joining us here today on 20 Lore Pro. We'll see you all here in the next round.